If you're interested in supporting Perilous Storytelling, why not check out the Folk and Dagger campaign shirt? Link in the description or go to pleasestopshopping.com for more details. Welcome back to Perilous Storytelling. After some terrible toilet terrorized these intrepid travelers and turned out to, to be a tree lady, they're on their way back to Karn to finally meet with their contact at the Adventurers Guild, Dwellweather. You guys have left the farm. Uh, you've left the the sweet boy behind. Uh, what was his What was his name again? I forget. Was it Dwarf something? Dwarf what did McNown we say? Verb. Dwarf McNown yep. Verbs. Uh, pleasant farm. He's rewarded you with the the gold, and you've all gotten a bit of a boon from the uh, druid that you've set free. Not druid, dryad. Sorry. <laughs> we would never set free a druid. <laughs> no, there's limits. <laughs> There's limits to how much uh, how much pain you can experience. So you're headed back to Karn. Uh, you're kind of traveling through. It took about, I would say, what? It took about half day. So uh, by the time you guys are about halfway to Karn, uh, you're going to have to set up camp for the night. Does anybody have survival? Um, is survival in 5th edition? I should probably ask that. It is, uh, I believe. It is. I do not okay. have it. I do not. Uh, where would I, it be? I have proficiency <laughs> in it. Yeah. Do you want to roll to set up? Uh, we're going to assume that you guys have adventures provi uh, provisions, like a, like one of you has a tent or something that you can I actually, set up. I, I do actually have that. I do have. Mm, okay. Okay. I have let an me, explorer's let me roll pack. survival. Okay. I rolled David, eighteen. Nice. You set up all the tents. Does anybody want to keep watch? I'll keep watch. Thank you. <laughs> I say after not sleeping on the boat, I feel like Kinnick's Cam very Yeah, tired. that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say like, I feel like Kinnick, I volunteer Kinnick Kinnick needs to, to keep sleep. watch. No, it's fine. You can overrule me, but is I this, volunteer. Kinnick. Is this is this a? By the way, David, is it like a family sized tent, or have you set up everybody's tent for them? I mean, I, I'm I leaving can... this up to you. <laughs> well, I'm. Do we want to sleep in Sad a big tent, or do we want? Sad Sad oh wait, that's what he's asking. How many tents do you well, have, David? I only have one, and it's a small one in my inventory. It's like a, a single person. Okay, tent. then the rest of us can eat shit outside. Then I guess you all, all, all you guys have have tents. How you guys have starting have equipment. I want to sleep out amongst the stars. That's a you thing, buddy. If you want to <laughs> listen to it, if you want to look ah, up to the fucking that's the stars big dipper. <laughs> I, I'm gonna rest my head on the bag holding my tent. I mean, <laughs> God, I hope it rains. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sleep in my tent. All right, Brick. What is your uh, what is your passive perception? It's uh, let me look. I thought we were getting into voice acting right there. Jesus. <laughs> no, it's uh, a <laughs> zero. Okay. Do you want to roll a perception check for me, quick? Oh wait, no. Passive is just your your fucking level. I'm a mm -hmm. dummy. It's uh, <laughs> it's that's not wisdom, is it? <laughs> it's perception. It is. It is. It is wisdom. wisdom. Yeah, it's nine. Okay. Here's a oh here's God. here's a survival. Fuck it. Well, yeah, but your passive perception, not survival. Here's a here's a here's a passive perception. Okay, per all right. Perc oh, perception is wisdom. Never mind. Yeah. All right. It's it's just your passive, is just your your ability number. Yeah. You hear a uh, you hear a, uh, a a twig snap in the distance nearby one of the bushes that your uh, your camp is set up next to. You guys are set in a small clearing, uh, a small grove of trees essentially off the beaten path, and uh, it's it's kind of surrounded by small shrubs and trees. Uh, in the center is the campfire, and then you have a couple, you know, your, your tents. Kenick is sleeping on his, his bag for some reason, I guess. Um, but um, tents are set up. Oh, what's up? Does, does uh, the sad machine hear it because of his feline hearing? No, you're asleep. But what? You can wake up a cat with a noise, <laughs> a small noise. <laughs> it's true. It sounds like true. a can of tuna opening. Uh, crisp. <gasps> <laughs> Holy shit! This is this is mostly for whoever is is set up on guard. So brick, you hear a distance like okay. a like an ominous twig snapping. Yeah, an ominous. Twi an twigs. ominous twig, not just any twig, an ominous shit. twig. Oh my god, we're fucked. The head's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Just a twig snap. I'm not that bothered. I'm not waking people up for that. But I'm extra attentive now. You hear uh, directly to the right, about, I would say about 10 feet from where that first twig snapped, you hear another, you hear another like rustling. 
sound. I begin screeching to alert the party. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I wake up and I immediately throw a knife in a random Roll direction. a d20 for me, Avery. Oh my god. <laughs> Please don't roll a You've oh! killed me. Roll, roll a 20. Your knife Nat 20. Nat 20, flies maybe. through your hand. It, it flies straight into the bushes where the sound comes from. And you hear, you hear, <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Sad Machine stands up in his tent and just breaks his tent. <laughs> Freaking the fuck out! I, I like, I like you, hear, a, you hear a and a thud. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't even want to roll for damage. It's just fucking dead. Oh my god! You just killed a bunny. Food. Whatever. Actually, that's pretty fair. Are you just gonna leave it? Gonna go okay. All right. I, you, I was gonna ask. Are you you just head into the bushes. There? You head into the bushes and you or you you kind of open the bush up like a nice Christmas present, like Santa's Santa's Christmas morning present, and. Inside the bush is a small, a green skinned goblin child with a knife between his eyes. Oh, a child? Oh, child? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, how quickly can I? How quickly can I hide the body? <laughs> I start walking over to where the commotion is happening. On on the body, there is a essentially, it's just like a thin, uh, basically almost completely naked, except for a leather loincloth and a small pouch at its side. Uh, but it is it is horribly dead. <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> Get it, don't come over here. Hey, what's happening? Did you get it? What was it? A rabbit? <laughs> Nothing. You wouldn't I, care. You wouldn't are care. You sure? Go away. Go back to the camp. Wanna, yeah. I'm pretty what's sure. What's happening, bird? I roll strength <laughs> to start furiously digging a hole with my bare hands. <laughs> <laughs> Over, over, over time as the party is interacting about this, this, this dead child, uh, you, you are digging a hole. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Bird, what's happening? I panicked. What do you look upset? Nothing. Go back to sleep, what? sad machine. <laughs> Go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. Do not see the dead child. What? <laughs> <laughs> Dead child? What? You killed a kid? Goblin child. Goblin child. And that makes a difference? Oh, you're one to fucking talk. Perhaps <laughs> it is but a stunted man. <laughs> Alright, break whose side are you on? <laughs> oh, it's, and it's dead? Pretty sure. You wanna, you wanna check? Well, what was it doing here? I don't, I don't know see. what's in its pouch. You're the one fucking manhandling this dead child. <laughs> I'm not manhandling it. You cannot put this role play do into not, me. Yeah, do not say that. <laughs> Can I look in the pouch? Yeah, inside the pouch, uh, oh, inside the pouch God. is a, uh, it is, <laughs> it is filled with human teeth. Oh, <laughs> guys, I saved us from the tooth goblin. Oh. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Are you sure it wasn't the, the goblin, the tooth goblin fairy? Like a reverse tooth fairy? So it takes our money and leaves teeth? No, it Did takes the teeth and leaves teeth? money. It's its collection of teeth. But it only has teeth. It, ma it magics the money. I don't know. Kenick, have you lost a tooth recently? Uh, I like Let's shake. count everybody's no. teeth. Open wide. <laughs> They're human teeth. It could only it couldn't even be Rick. Mm. <laughs> I mean, aren't 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 human teeth the same as elf teeth? How much is there a difference? Uh, when when I say Elf human teeth, teeth when I say human <laughs> teeth, it's like humanoid teeth. So it's like a series okay. of humanoid mm. teeth. I mean, everything but really Kenku, because Kenku don't, they have beaks, so. Well, or fucking or tabaxi. tabaxi. Tabaxi have teeth. Cat teeth. They, Cat yeah, teeth. but it's, like, yeah, it's, it's still humanoid. I, Human, I, humans in DNA. Teeth. What? I want humanoid to races in DMV. Okay, Brendan, Brendan, in the future, just say a bag of teeth. A ba it's a bag of assorted teeth. There we go. You go to the candy store, you get a bag of assorted yum, teeth. Assorted teeth. <laughs> I, I, yum, I, yum. I, uh, I, wanna, I ask uh, Ember to, to fly up into the air and scout around to see if there are any other uh, goblin children. <laughs> try, goblin try children. To, try to find his. <laughs> oh, by the parents. way, while all this is happening, I, I quietly retrieve my throwing knife. for Ember. No. Um, Ember. <laughs> Jesus. Ember can see off, in, off into the distance um, actually uh, what looks like signs of battle. Like, um,. Ember flies up and relays to you, hey, there's, um, looks like there's, like, a destroyed encampment over there. Mm. Does he speak I, like that with that voice? I mean, to, to, I, what do you want me to do, Cameron? How do you want me to do Ember's voice? That's <laughs> fine. Sorry. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's an encampment over here! 
It's like, do you want to do it like a psycho clown, David? I don't know. I was. I, I, I'm I'm just, the well, I think it's up to David how Ember talks. I don't like that. Also, yeah, Ember, see? Ember doesn't talk. It's a telepathic relay. It's like a telepathic it's, it's thing. It's like a knowing thing. It's it's not like a sp- speech. Brendan, yeah. what is Bird's thinking voice? <laughs> That's about right. Right now, yeah. yeah. I'll accept that. Uh, <clears throat> Ember says there's a there's like a destroyed encampment nearby. Maybe we can find out more about what this uh, child was doing here. By, I guess. By going there. I don't know. Do I, we bring the body? Do, do we bring the body? Do we bring the body? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what, why would we bring the body? This is new for me. <laughs> hey, guys, check this out. Pow. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens when you get close to us. <laughs> <laughs> Don't rustle around in bushes against this party. <laughs> By the way, I I I I, I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page. I took that bag of teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't know. I don't know what it's for. Teeth. I don't know. You can you can probably grind it up and make a potion or something, right? That's how potions yeah. are made. <laughs> All from teeth. Potions are one hundred percent teeth. At some point. Hey, we might need teeth at some point, and then we won't have to kill any new things, and then you'll be thanking me. Seems like you don't have a problem of killing new things. I am devastated by this, Kinnick. I'm putting up a front. <laughs> <laughs> if you throw teeth at people, they're probably going to be like, oh, Jesus, what the fuck? And Why am I throwing doing? teeth at people? Because Where did this can, come from? I don't know. It's Sad like machine. Go back to sleep. I didn't. I'm saying this as a person, not a character. You have to say OOC when you you're talking, say, David. Okay, David, go back to sleep. Uh, bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good session. <laughs> All right, I, I, I just, fuck this so I just hard think so fast. It's a little, like, I, I don't know. All right, then we'll, let's bury the body. I, I already I, dug a hole. I'm just saying, I, I feel like we box. should figure out why they were spying on us. And this encampment is the best lead we have since I don't think they had anything on their body other than teeth. I'm not saying that we shouldn't go to the encampment. I'm saying let's bury the body first. Brick already dug a hole. We just have to chuck it in, you know? Chuck it in? I... (laughs) We'll Well, place the body in the grave, okay? Yeah. Bird? I'm going to go get a rock. That's oh, a grave headstone head. We do not mark this grave. <laughs> no, we should mark this grave. Well, we, need to I... give it, we need to give it a proper ritual. Do you know goblin rituals? Uh, Roll religion. I don't rituals? I don't, do Roll religion, do it. <laughs> Roll religion now. Moira Roll religion. Here. Wait, let me find it. There's religion. I roll day 17. You know a goblin prayer of sustenance and that's it. I know a goblin prayer of sustenance. That's close enough. Yeah, a lot enough. of good that's gonna do for him now. Well, we're not eating the body. He it, won't be. He won't be hungry in the afterlife. Kinnick, why would that be? Your interpret. Goblins Fine. traditionally are buried in unmarked graves. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think that's accurate. I'm just saying we don't do any religion or anything. We just leave a marker now. So if we find out who's parents this goblin has we might be able to tell them where their child is buried i'm like staring daggers at bird i'm throwing daggers at kinnick <laughs> goblins are born from spores <laughs> they have no parents <laughs> deception 14 oh i don't think I believe these it. deceptions are working <laughs> uh did you guys put the did you chuck the body in <laughs> I've no, we gently lowered the body in. Yeah, we placed the body okay. in the grave. As as everybody gently lowers the body in. Everybody. I put well, as somebody puts the fucking child's body in the goddamn the hole, Cameron. Ultimately I don't think this was my sad fault. machine. I woke up and threw a knife in panic. Sad machine goes very accurate. Not and cam Lee it and I will hungry. I push it farther into the ground with my foot and I roll a 16 of strength to do so. Oh my god. (laughs) Yeah, you just (laughs) successfully the corpse of a goblin child has been buried. May you rest in peace. That's a beautiful sad machine. Maybe it is better that we just forget about this.
All right. Are you guys just going to go back to sleep for the rest of the night? Yes. Okay. All I right. Wanna, I want to go to the encampment. I want to see what happens. I'll go. I, if I'll you, go if Sad Machine and Brick want to go to sleep, I will go with Kinnick to the encampment. I was going to go with Kinnick no matter what. Okay. I'm, I guess I'll go too. Machine, right now, Sad Machine, Sad Machine is on a cultural exchange, you know? He, he's going to learn about <laughs> That's goblins. a really fucked up way to That's think about this, Sad Machine. Way. How is it fucked up? Okay. I'm gonna learn about goblin. (laughs) I'm gonna learn about goblin culture. Are y'all just barreling through? Are y'all are y'all barreling through towards the encampment, or are y'all stealthily barreling? Uh, I I remember Ember Uh, said it was destroyed, so I think I don't really care too much about like people hearing well i would like to be a little bit cautious so that we don't break a twig and get accidentally (laughs) murked by a sleeping kenku don't worry we've got you with with us how how destroyed is it uh ember ember saw like clear signs of a struggle and smoldering flames okay we don't know it's abandoned Mm. i want to sneak okay all right okay roll stealth i'll go with it then 18 do we all roll stealth okay uh if you want to stealth roll stealth I, I thought I was going up ahead. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you can go up ahead then. Never mind. I guess we all. I don't roll. trust that. We're rolling for that. Uh, I rolled a twenty-one. Right. I don't. I don't. <laughs> oh wow! We all nailed it. We all nailed uh, it. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, nailed it. <laughs> well, Cameron rolled a thirteen. <laughs> All right, well, we can all go together. Then. Avery, yeah. uh, sorry, Bird, Sad Machine, and Brickhouse all all disappear into the shadows. Kenick picks up two branches with, with leaves on them and puts them in front of his face as you all move forward. <laughs> <laughs> Is it working? Uh, you all head towards the uh, destroyed encampment, and as you come upon the clearing where the encampment is, you can see that it's clearly situated uh, kind of next to this hill, and it seems like there was a cave of some sort that has been collapsed. Lying on the ground is something Ember did not see, is a host of goblin corpses all lining the walls, and just kind of a, just mass destruction. Um, uh, roll on. turns ro- the bird and says, wow, you're quite busy. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good throw. To the uh, right of one of the entrances to the cave, uh, you see three hooded figures and a carriage, and they're picking up the bodies and throwing them into the back of the of the carriage. There, shotgun in there. Told you. Proper procedure. <laughs> I might feel awful about everything. I want to approach the hooded figures. Okay. Uh, and say uh excuse me okay roll uh roll persuasion or uh, be diplomacy roll persuasion like, for excuse yeah, no, me yeah <laughs> all right you head up you head up to one of the uh, you head up to, uh, excused <laughs> you head up to one of the hooded figures and uh they immediately turn around and go oh, ah! oh he scared me uh the the hood comes down and it's a uh, it's an elven woman with long flowing blonde hair and you can see that she's wearing like some kind of leather armor and kind of a green cloak that was that was covering her face. Oh, you scared me there. Oh, jeez, scared her again when she took the hood off. No, you scared her the first. I'm just I'm just reiterating. Okay. Yeah, twice. Yeah, she's very 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 skittish. Uh, all right, I want to also remove my hood and hold out my hand and say, "Hi, I'm Bird." Oh, hi hi Bird. I'm Eleanor. Are you, uh, are you, uh, what are you, what are you doing out here near this, uh, <laughs> she's, she's, the one tracking adventuring. Bo- she's the one chucking <laughs> no, bodies going- into her car. What? <laughs> Listen, Kinnick, I'm not at full capacity. Like I'm not, I don't have all my facilities right I'm, now. I just you're, killed a you're child. You're on your own, by the way. I, I, yeah, I, no, I, I understand that. <laughs> are you all with the guild? Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, that's fine. Uh, all right. Well, hey, I mean, we're heading back. We just finished up this uh, this quest to slay these goblins. We did miss we missed one, though. It was a, a, a pesky little monster. They called him the Teeth Snatcher. Oh. Yep. oh feeling, now, he I'm was worth... better now. He was worth a pretty good bounty. He was worth a full 15 gold pieces and one of the main reasons that we came here. But, I mean, if you use each of these goblin corpses will net us some coins. They use them for alchemy and, you know... Sometimes people like to use goblin ears as an aphrodisiac. I mean, it's, it's we a weird thing. So this little teeth snatcher, right? Yeah. Did his did he keep the teeth in a little sack like this? Like take out the sack and I kind of jiggle it and you can hear the teeth. Oh, around. you got him. Hey, nice yeah. job. Yeah. Uh, while sleeping, actually, if I uh, 
I mean, if I if I can brag a bit. Well, well, I mean, hey, I mean, I've done some of my best kills sleeping. Are these goblin ears more valuable if it's a younger goblin? Uh, no. I mean, goblins come out almost pretty much fully formed. Size doesn't really matter. I mean, feral goblins anyway. Your royal goblins are, you know, they're they're normal. They're they're fine folk. I am not. I'm not saying anything mean about them. It's the ferals that you have problems with. Mm, I don't like this. <laughs> How's Kenick feeling about this? <laughs> Kenick's nodding and taking down notes. <laughs> I don't think that's up to the DM. Yeah, no. that is not up to the DM. <laughs> but he is doing it, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can I still hide can, it, a- can excuse genocide, but he draws the line at child murder. Well, feral feral <laughs> goblins come straight out of uh, spawning pools, whereas royal goblins are born like almost any humanoid. Feral goblins are almost a magical type of creature, mm-hmm. like spores. Learning all about their culture, sad machine. See, we all want a little bit. Are you going to give them a proper ritual? No, God, no. We're going to take them back and burn whatever parts we don't use. What? Yeah. So what do these goblins do? Uh, usually just spawning pip crops up and then just start stealing and wheeling and dealing. And that they're, cr- so they're, so the punishment is death? I mean, they're stealing? more like pests. It's less like uh, but bandits they can where you have to arrest them. Barely, usually. Barely. A monkey stole my teeth. I'd kill it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That was not in character. That was me, Avery. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like it's I, I it's it's like a weird uh basically they're they're kind of your stereotypical fantasy goblin, whereas royal goblins are an actual like uh se- more sentient race of goblins. Gotcha. So so they're sentient but not sapient, kind of. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, feral goblins are animals, basically. Like they, you would treat them like you would yeah. like a like a deer or a bear. They just can use basic tools and also communicate and live in groups of communities. Yeah, like a lot of animals, Kinnick, <laughs> and have emotions and well, family. I lived in a city. Like a lot of animals, sad machine. Well, I'm talking in birds. <laughs> like a lot of animals, <laughs> David. <laughs> I'm justifying myself in both worlds right now. <laughs> it's seamless. All right, I guess character swap is working. You mind out. if uh, you mind if me and my party uh, come with you back to back to town? Because we got a second quest to turn in as well. Yeah, I mean, if you want to, uh, for room, I really don't have room up front. So, I mean, the only way we're really going to get you to town if you want to come with us oh. is the pile of goblin yeah, bodies. Yeah, no. I, well, we'll see you in town. Yeah, Eleanor. If- yeah, Eleanor. I'm at the guild. Okay, great. Great. I'll see you at the uh, at the guild. Yeah, me and my party here. The Silver Bucks. Oh. Hi, Silver Bucks. <laughs> I, <laughs> two guys, the, um... the other two guys pull down their hoods, and it's a half-orc with a top knot, and the other one is a uh, just, a, just a human dude with a scar over his eye and black hair and a giant sword. Oh, Sasuke. Um, yeah, can his I, name is Gitz. <laughs> can I roll Gitz, investigation on the, <laughs> on the encampment? Yeah, if you oh, want to. Okay. I rolled it. <laughs> uh, from what you can tell, it was a pretty uh, easy battle. Like, you find traces of explosives near the cave entrance. It seemed like they just smoked them out and then kind of blew up the entrance to the cave and uh, just kind of systematically wiped out the village. You guys want to head back to camp then? I guess we're going back to sleep. <laughs> you're going gonna to take that bounty on that, that uh, goblin? Yeah. Why not? I got the teeth. <laughs> who am I hurting by not? Like who? 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 who who's sure? The who's damage is already if done. I don't. Yeah. Damage. <laughs> Glad to see you've come around to, to your own decisions. <laughs> Wasn't a decision, first of all, and second of all, they're animals. I don't give a shit. Uh huh. Listen, Cameron. Sorry. <laughs> listen, <laughs> Cameron. Cameron. I will say, Kenick listen, would Kenick. have cultural knowledge of feral goblins. Yeah. Also. Kinnick, thin fucking ice. Animal is my fucking word. Look at me. <laughs> hey, jeez. What? You just argue against your own point? I stomp back to camp. <laughs> it's been a night for bird. Like, oh, all right. To sleep. Day, day, you all fall back asleep. Uh, Brickhouse, do you still keep watch? Or do you guys switch shifts? <clears throat> I'll keep watch. Okay. Oh, no, I can. we can switch. I can, I can keep watch. After a full night's rest, the... The Teletubby babyface sun appears in the sky and 
y'all wake up bright and early in the morning to head back to the city of Karn. Uh, on your way back, nothing of note really happens. Um, I mean, it, it, David sees a squirrel. It's pretty cool. Nice. Sad Machine's like, nice. Also, I'm pretty epic. perturbed by the sun having a face now. <laughs> it's not canon. It's just a just a just a, a joke. A flavor text. A, yeah, flavor, flavor text. text. <laughs> the 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 sun does not have a, a Teletubby's baby face. I promise. I could make that true if I wanted to. No, but I won't. I choose not to. Uh, this is my reality, and I'll warp it the well, way that I want to. We're all at the worst mercy of a man with voice actor in his bio. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's in air quotes. Why you gotta be so rude to me? <laughs> it's in air quotes and there's no anime profile picture. Leave it's him in, alone. It's in air quotes and it's followed by mom's number one handsome boy. So I think I'm pretty safe. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's, do I, is that my V card? My voice actor God card? now has Bird's <laughs> approval. <laughs> All right. So heading back into town, uh, the guards nod at you as you head back in. Um, I'm assuming making our way right back to the Adventurers Guild. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't have any stops yeah. I need to make. Inside of the Adventurers Guild, uh, it's kind of a slow day. Um, you can see that there is a the cart of goblin corpses out back, and people are you know getting rid of them. <laughs> they're 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 taking them and storing them in the nearby warehouse. And there is a small gnome behind the counter that is jotting down, uh, looks like some final paperwork. And he looks up and he nods at you and gestures for your party to come over. Oh, that's not the same guy as last time, is it? No, it is not Dick Justice. Mm. Uh, by the way, did I heal overnight? Yes, uh, you did. That was a full okay. rest. So okay. all of your spell slots and all of your health has gone back up. I'll walk over to the gnome. <laughs> Say, we uh, dealt with the haunted shitter. And how was the toilet? Unusable. Hmm. It's a kind of a long story. Really stinky. <laughs> it was, yeah. I don't want to talk about it. Anyways, beyond the haunted toilet thing, I also picked up this on the way back, and I heard you were looking for it, and I pull out the, the tooth pouch, and I jiggle it. Ah, oh, the teeth goblin. All right, well, give me that. Hand over the trophy there. He takes the pouch of teeth from you and he puts it behind the counter and he counts out 15 gold pieces from he has one of those little like dispensers that dispenses change, but it has gold coins on his on his waist. He's got uh, little circular glasses and like I want to say Rick and Morty hair. OK, sure. Why not? What is Rick and Morty or like hair? Tekken hair? Oh, the, the shock of like white hair from the back, but like bald on top and in the front. Gotcha. But like spiky white hair on the back. Uh, he hands you 15 gold coins and says, so, any more adventures for you? I Weren't we supposed to see party. somebody? I, yeah. I want to I show him the, uh, that is the logo, or the logo, the symbol oh, yeah, I have that, that we saw. Uh, oh, um, also... We weren't you two supposed to go to the uh, cool knives and stuff or whatever for uh, what was it again? Oh, yeah. I got to pick up my knife. Or yeah. I got my knives. Yeah. Do I need to pick anything up. I'm very forgetful. Or did we or did that already happen? I can't remember. No, there, there was you had to go back because his brother, his artificer brother was there or whatever. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so yeah. That. Hey, that was the thing that happened. Cameron, do yeah. you want to go back to the smithy then? Yeah, but like I thought we would deal with what we're doing now, like at the yeah, yep, yep. Um, I just you know, what what had happened was uh, you had gone to the smithy, and uh, the gentleman had sold you some knives already, but he yeah, said yeah. that he could have his his brother would be over today. Yeah, Is Cameron, yeah. the only one getting that. Uh, or did I also want something? I think you also wanted to see about uh, something from the artificer as well. His name was Sun Dinklebottom. No relation except for the relation. Right. Gotcha. All right. Uh, so uh, meeting with, let's recap back to where we were. Uh, Dwellweather had just received the bag of teeth and had given Bird 15 gold pieces for the trophy. Yeah. Hey, cheers, dude. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Can, uh, can we also show him the like, sigil we saw? That was like what I was trying yeah, to say. Yeah, of course. Like, I, the, I take out, the, uh, I take out the, the um, wooden plank with the sigil on it and I show it to him and I say, do you recognize this sigil? Do you boys have a letter for me by chance? I look at the party. Mm -hmm. I have a fucking letter. Gabble Goose gave you guys. Uh, we do have a letter. God, it's he been gave so it fucking me. long. Yeah, he, he gave it. Okay, yeah. eight months it. ago. Yeah, I have it. I can give it. I have it. We do. Here, here you go. And I hand over the paper. Mm. 
Mm, all right, well, come with me. Uh, Dwellwither takes you all back uh, into the uh, behind the counter and into the back office of the Adventurers Guild and sits behind a small desk. Uh, he closes the curtains and says, Well, here we are. Looks like I have a job for you to do. Now, first things first, uh, I'm going to have to give you boys some exposition, a little bit of information. Um, do you know who or what you're working for? Uh, uh working for Gabble Goose. <laughs> yeah, it's true. True. You are working for Gabble Goose, but you're working, working for, for something. The government. Something far, far greater, correct? Now, in times of great need, the gnome high admirals can sometimes call upon a certain service. And this certain service works with the Admiralty, and we kind of coexist to benefit uh, hither and yonder, which of course is the gnome homeland. Uh, I am a member of this society, and in times of trouble, uh, we sometimes are allowed to hire uh, kind of contract agents, uh, more... Mm, I don't want to say expendable because I find that quite a rude word, but as more independent contractors that can work a little bit more openly than we can, less tied down by corporate, uh, not corporate, sorry, by government rules. Now, our society is called Charybdis. With this, if you choose to accept the mission or quest, that I'll be giving you, you will be contract agents of Charybdis, meaning you will have to abide by very, very specific rules, but only a few since you are not going to be full members, but you will be paid. You will get more jobs. You'll get more work and, uh, you know, we can go from there. It's not uh, sealed, but there is a bit of a ritual to be hired. So before I can tell you any information um, regarding this job we have for you, I will tell you, it does not require you to take an innocent life. It, it will not, we will not ask you to go beyond your moral code. We only ask that you get the job done. And that's really all that we want is someone to get the job done. Now, Gabble Goose, Sam Gabble Goose, must have had his reasons to bring you fellows here. And I trust him greatly, uh, one of our absolute finest finest of, of high agents and as a lower agent of charybdis i have no choice but to listen to him but i do have to carry out the ritual that has to be done before i give you any more information okay uh well first of all great speech second of all what does this have to do with the sigil on the wooden plank that I showed you? There will be a time when that information, the information that you need from that, will come to light. Um, you may want to keep an eye on that plank because it is not just but a sigil. There is uh, something a little more ancient on there. So you may want to have a, a wizard or, 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 or magician or artificer examine it if you get the chance to. But... Uh, we will make information come to light if that becomes necessary, but currently uh, we will be discussing the, the job that you were originally brought here for, if that's acceptable to you. Do we... Uh, is this got stuff to do with the man in the orb that I heard? Like I said, that information may become available late at a later date. Um, currently, you are not under contract. You're not under the ritual. So I, I cannot give you anything more than a... Um, it's, it's a bit classified. What's the ritual like? It's very, very easy. Uh, there is a, a pen that I have here, and there is a sigil or seal that we draw, and it keeps you from leaking any classified or, or specific information that we may not want let out of this world. See, when we have our contractors, we have to uh, contract them under a magical kind of contract, as well as a formal contract. You will be paid. But the 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 work that we have to do is very easy, very simple, uh, but it keeps you from uh, squealing. As, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a kind of basic crime lord would say, uh, no squealers, no snitches. Uh, this essentially keeps you from speaking about it to uh, interested parties. Confidential, confidential things like what? Well, I rolled deception. <laughs> off. <gasps> Nineteen. I damn. I mean, like 
if there was information that would somehow put someone in jeopardy that we do not want in jeopardy, then you would not be able to speak of it. Nothing would impart from your lips with this contract. It's very, very simple and removable once the contract is done. And then we can wipe any necessary information if you no longer want to um, keep working with us. You will keep any money or rewards gained, but uh, we may have to do a little bit of tinkering. We're very forthright about that. Uh, you may leave anytime you'd like here as well. It's just one of those things that uh, has to be done. I really wanted him to slip and be like, oh, confidential stuff like this. Well, he has the mark. He physically can't. Oh, you physically can't. Mm -hmm. That's what that's the information. Oh, that's the information said. that we got. <laughs> oh, I'm done with shit. <laughs> so the whole reason, some of the reasons why I'm here is to do research. I want to know that my research won't be shackled by this confidentiality. No, no, no. It's only information directly related to the organization. So it's not information regarding ancient secrets, treasure troves, mysterious knowledge from beyond. No, 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 no. I promise you it's only in relation to Charybdis. The only magical information that you may not have privy to is the creation of the contract itself. I understand that you seem like a, a scholar, a well, a, a knowledgeable individual. I don't want to take away your work. This is why we are so forthright about this, because we understand. Here at Charybdis, we know and understand that it could be a bother. It could be a bit of a problem if, if for some reason you find something that is related to your life's work, to the crux of your origin. That may be related to Charybdis, but I almost assuredly promise you we can also work out some sort of agreement if if something related to Charybdis does crop up related to, uh, let's say, your origin or, or related to your, your birth or your secrets, family secrets, unknown. Uh, we can always kind of work with you on that. Um, there are ways around the system that we can kind of figure it out together. We have a very, very good customer service department. I wish to roll Arcana to see if I have heard of any such um uh contract or, or magical contract as this before mm -hmm. I, I i rolled a 23 well, i got 23. Right. rolled 19 all right uh you understand very well that magical contracts are uh useful in a lot of legal work um tends to be used in a lot of Similar things uh, like uh, criminal enterprises tend to use them for their higher ups. They are very expensive, though, or they can be very expensive to create. Um, that's why a lot of the time they seem it seems easier to kill a witness than to try to stick a magical contract that is uh, permanent or semi permanent on them. Right. Do I know of any way to break such uh, contracts? Uh, certain ones, yes. Like, you have knowledge of how to break very simple magical contracts, like uh, like legal ones. Um, mm -hmm. But you don't know, you don't have the knowledge of what kind of magical contract they will be putting on you. Okay. Well, uh, I've come all this way. I, I, I feel like I, like, I don't trust it, but I'm not turning back now. I will say that as you work with us, that as you work on a contract basis, there is always an opportunity for employment and also an opportunity to utilize Charybdis's resources. What does what does Brick House feel about this? I get paid. All right, I'll I go. think. Sounds good to me. I will ask, do you have any questions for me before we get this along? Before we get this show on the road, um, what would you like to ask me that I may be able to answer how much are we getting paid on a per contract basis uh very very handsomely depends we can work out the details after we uh talk about the job but it's very very handsome i may work as a clerk at this adventurer's guild but that's not really my job if you catch my drift i want to roll insight to see if i catch his drift all right <laughs> you don't nine. yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a nine. You do like, not I'm catch just, his I, 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 I nod, but it's quite clear that I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> I guess we're just accepting the contract then. Yeah, I, I, I'm going mm -hmm. to accept the contract. Yeah, I'll That's accept it. <clears throat> Adventure. I'm, I'm just a sheep. I'll follow anybody. All right. Well, uh, I'll need you all to uh, undo and roll up your sleeves for me if you would please put your arm vein first hand on this desk and i will write the contracts vein first vein? like hand upwards facing facing the sky palm up 
palm up. Palm Thank up. you. I, I don't know basic <laughs> words sometimes. Zane first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every direction is vain first. That's why I was confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> My brain don't work real good sometimes. <laughs> I'm from the country. <laughs> As you all do, do all, all right. You all accept the contract then? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, he has you all put your hands palm up on the table and he pulls out a small uh a, a, a small ink pen essentially and a little uh, a little bowl that seems to be filled with uh water and he dips the pen in the bowl and he starts on uh starts on bird and grabs bird's talons and right between essentially right on the wrist uh, starts drawing, it starts almost sl slightly like carving a magical civil sigil. It does not hurt, it is painless, uh, and it does not draw blood, but it is essentially, as he is, is drawing this sigil, uh, it disappears as he, as he draws it, and it just slightly raises the, the skin around it, underneath the feathers. And then repeats the process with Cameron, and then Can repeats I, the pro- Yep, do you want to roll uh, Arcana? Yes, I do. Okay, roll Arcana. I rolled, I rolled 16. You do not have any knowledge of a contract involving direct skin contact like this with a magical mm -hmm. tool. Okay. Does the I, same I, with when Cameron? He's asking me when he's doing it, and I'm like, and what happens if we break this contract? Uh, you won't be able to speak of anything. Uh, you won't be able to write of anything or any information regarding Charybdis. Um, you can ask for permission. To retain certain information or uh, speak certain information if the job requires it. Uh, that will have to go through a uh, handler that we can assign to you uh, if you prove yourself worthy. Uh, but it can can cause a little bit of um, asphyxiation if you continually try to break the contract. Um, side effects do include death, but only if you continuously over and over again. And I mean a lot of trying to break the contract through riddles or uh, through 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 writing or through puzzles or through translation. The contract is intelligent, so it does understand intent. All right. So he, he does the same thing on your wrist then? Kenneth? Yep. Okay. Kenneth? And then, Kenneth? Kenneth, Kenneth <laughs> I said Kenneth. It just turned into Kenneth. <laughs> well, Kenneth. <laughs> All right. Uh, same with Brickhouse. Mm-hmm. Any, any... <laughs> He takes off. He takes off his gauntlet. <laughs> it's just on the armor. I am machine, <laughs> and then same with sad machine. Mm -hmm. All right. Haha! -ha, it tickles. All right. The contract is sealed. We can talk about the job. There have been uh, a series of disappearances within Karn. Um, Six disappearances over the course of six months. Uh, one almost every month. And so far, six merchants have been kidnapped, stolen, disappeared, murdered. Uh, we don't know. Um, we've kind of reached a dead end here uh, locally. And uh, the local const constabulatory has not really uh, been of much use or help. Uh, they've done some digging, but haven't been able to dig deep enough to get to the nuggety goodness. Uh, so we've brought you in to see if you can nip it in the bud, axe it. Uh, essentially, every merchant that has disappeared uh, has one thing in common, and this is why Charybdis is involved. Every merchant has a history of trade with Hither and Yonder. They are all, or all have been, high-profile merchants who deal in food or other necessities for cities and city ships um, that are integral to the uh, continuation and continued survival of our homeland. And uh, most recently, um, an arms dealer has gone missing. A very, very well-known arms dealer. Uh, you may actually be familiar with the name. Uh, Johan Gabelgoose is gone. Oh mm. my God. So the arms dealer needs a hand. <laughs> <laughs> should we <laughs> should we roll history to see who knows him? If he is famous? 
<laughs> Avery Gabble Goose. Goose. I can't get... I'm a friend of the Gabble Goose family. Bird is a friend oh, of the Gabble right. Goose family. He uh he is knowledgeable to an extent of of Johan. Um DM me some information about Johan. Yes, I will. Here is a list of the missing merchants for you. Um as well as Johan. There have of course been a couple others. Uh should be in your list. Should have should be in your handouts list underneath your uh, journal. Let me know if that popped up. Yeah, I got it. Okay. These are the merchants that have gone missing, uh, so that it, it may assist you in your clue finding. Um, the captain of the guard may also be someone to speak to about this incident. Uh, Noral Bringo, uh, he has yet to find anything substantial, um, and their nightly patrols have come up, uh, Zilcho, Zero, Kaput, but, uh, you know, he tries to do his job, and if he may know something that uh, he's not privy to talk about, then uh, come back and we can try some other methods of persuasion that may or may not be 100% legal. Like I said, if it's not in your comfort zone, that's fine. Uh, but I have a, a bit of a feeling about him. Now, that's, of course, on me. I may be completely wrong. But like I said... Um, if you decide to take this, uh, you will be authorized 50 gold pieces to be used for operating costs and a sum of 100 gold pieces per member of your little party. Whoa. Wow. If you can bring Johan back alive. Now, we can discuss if uh, things do not go very well, but like I said, we are willing to pay you handsomely. And uh, handsome is my middle name. <laughs> Quick question. You said there were six missing merchants over six months. This list only oh. has five. Oh, sorry. Let me... Uh, that was a DM mistake, I actually... Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, I that, that was, was a bad. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, ah, he thought I wouldn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was not a... Uh, that was not a on purpose. One second. Let me fix that. It's okay. okay. <laughs> there we go. I fixed the handout. But yes, we are willing to pay um, a hefty sum um, since one of the Missing is not one of our own, but related to uh, a, a great clan that has worked under Charybdis for a very long time. So, of course, we are willing to um, get them back post haste. How long ago was he taken? He was actually the last merchant to be taken just uh, early this month. It is, I would say, on the calendar. Um, it's the... 20th of the whatever month it is. Let's just say the 20th. Of, we'll just do normal human calendar. It's the 20th of March. Okay. And so he was taken at the beginning of March the 3rd. And where's the last place he was seen? Uh, actually, his home. Was that the we're same for there. all of the... Was that the same for all of the missing uh, people? No. Some of them disappeared uh, just right after going to a bar. Some of them disappeared uh, in the dead of night. Um... Some of them never made it home. Um, but we have uh, reason to believe Johan did make it home after a preliminary search of his uh, quarters, of, of his home. And uh, we believe that he was somehow taken while at home. We have not searched fully into his home um, as we don't have the best investigators here. You did search. We did search. We did a pre preliminary search um, but sometimes a, a, a different... What, what was the... Was there, like, sign of, like, clear struggle? No, but there was a, a, a kind of meal preparation. Um, there were uh, pancakes on the uh, the oven burner still. The kidnappers made food? No, there... no. It, was, it seemed as though he had been taken while cooking breakfast. Were there signs of struggles with any of the other merchants and where they were taken from there have been not no signs of struggles whatsoever we don't even know where most of them were taken and there have been no witnesses that have come forward regarding it you have a mage or a warlock look at the scenes uh we have we have had uh, a local artificer check it out but past that we haven't found much and any signs of magic uh no 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 uh, no signs of magic that they could find hmm. i guess we're gonna have to Actually, go ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But before then, uh, Kinnick and Bird need to stop by the shop. Yeah. Mm. Mm. While you guys do that, I'll go to the restroom because I'm going to piss my pants. I'll be right back. All right. Later, sad machine.
All right. Bye, Sarah. Bye, everybody. I want to. I want to ask quickly if there are any suspects. Okay, so you, so you ask, so you ask uh, if there are any like obvious suspects. Nothing of note. There's no mercenary criminal. Uh, anybody who would want to harm uh, the High Admiralty or or hither and yonder itself. Uh, we keep a, a pretty keen eye on the comings and goings of our. Uh, national enemies and the those that work for them and while there have been one or two little uh, mercenary incidents and a few minor scuffles over the last couple months nothing serious and nothing of note nobody who is uh, as you would call a major player has appeared on the board and the only things these suspects ha- the suspects these victims have in common are that they're merchants and that they've dealt with hither and yonder that and uh, i there is uh, one characteristic that I guess is is true of all six merchants, and uh, they are how do I say this politely? Horrible drunkards. Oh. I can verify that about Johan. Johan <laughs> could not hold his dwarven wine at all. And they all fre- so they have all frequent the local taverns in their respective regions. Yes, but all different right. ones. And Johan we, did a lot of his drinking at home. Yes. You will see when you get there. There are, there are quite a few bottles strewn about. All right. You ready to head out, Kinnick? Yeah. I think we're going to get all the information that we can, can here. It's better if we look yeah. at the scene. Sounds good. Here, take your operating costs. Uh, do any of you want to hold on to the 50 gold pieces? I assume maybe your party has a treasurer can... of some sort. Uh, I... I th- we can yeah. split it evenly, I feel. We can probably split it. No, he can't handle a treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, 50 gold pieces for... Two of us get 13 to ways. All right. He hands... He to, yeah, he hands... I'll get, I'll, I'll get 12. I can get 12, I don't mind. Okay, and then 13 yeah. to Kennick and Brickhouse. Okay. Sweet. All right, if you need anything from me, I'll be uh, here every day except for, well, uh, Sundays. What happens on Sundays? I have my day off. Oh. I like to sit at home and relax, read a good book. It's not like I'm working 24-7. That sounds very nice. It's very nice. Have a good Sunday. I will. I will have an excellent Sunday this coming Sunday. Thank you so much for caring about my feelings. You know what? Here's the sword of infinite enchantment. No. Wow, thanks. Wow, being nice paid off. (laughs) Wow, finally, just like in real life. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Fuck, that's funny. Um, So are we going to go to the... uh, The smithy. The artificer first? (sighs) Yeah, I want to go to the... I want to go to the... I feel like since we got actual money for preparations, I should check, like, if I could get something, like, better equipment. Yeah, I'm heading back to the armory. The armory. smithy. Blacksmith. Remember smithy. to keep your knife punch cards. I have I it. Still <laughs> have it. Ugh. Okay, so Bird and Kennick are heading to the armory, correct? Yes. That's okay. Really uh, us, or is it? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm still figuring out what I'm going to do with my with my time, honestly, but I don't think I'll follow you guys. So, Rick? Uh, I have no immediate concerns. Besides the contract we're doing. All right. Uh, you head back to the smithy and there is, of course, the gruff dwarf from before. And right next to him is another gwar- gruff dwarf. Uh, the dwarf that you guys had originally met had a long, like, flowing beard and uh, like a long flowing gray beard. Uh, the dwarf right next to him has long flowing gray hair and a clean face. Ah, oh, it's you again. Howdy. Welcome back. My brother's actually here. I'm Dinkle Sunbottom and this is, of course, my brother, Sun Dinklebottom. Your uh, brother tells me you're an artificer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by chance, would you have happened to inspect any crime scenes recently? Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah um, uh, yes, um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, one of my, um, month- I'm laughing. <laughs> I failed my charisma saving throw. I had to get at least a 17 in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm cl- I'm trying to hide the fact that I'm laughing at that response. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, well, as uh, yeah, um, yes, uh, you see, it, it's, um, uh, monthly I come to um, come to help my 
uh, uh, brother here, and um, uh, well, you know, he's family business, and I'm uh, this is a magical one. Uh, so yeah, sometimes I work on a, a per contract basis for the, the local cons- constabulary, the guard, and uh, I had I've come down a couple times for uh, a series of uh, odd disappearances, and uh, yeah, I tend to do a lot of the magical work in this area since I'm one of the only um I, I would say competent uh, uh, artifices uh, in the uh, in the fifth. 50 to uh, the 100 mile area. Would you be willing to share what you found with me? I could join a roll persuasion for that. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I rolled a 10. Uh, well, yeah, you know, no, 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 nothing much. Uh, just you, just. Uh, just some uh, boring residual magic, but there are there are there are, there are uh, fights often near the the places where I have examined. So huh. I I don't think residual it was... magic. Yeah, but well, it wasn't any it wasn't anything um, obviously harmful. But it was in his house. Uh, but, uh, which, uh, he's, uh, sometimes people use magical tools in the comfort of their own home, and I'm not the one to judge uh, anyone for anything they may do in the the privacy of their own home. And uh, hey, Bird, some you know you know you're hard to deal with any magic. No, well, I, I don't know any of these people personally. The city people are just uh, weird. Yes, and uh, Oh. What? No, I don't know of Johan dealing with any artificers or anything. Interesting. I'm adding it to my notes. <laughs> Phoenix on the spectrum. <laughs> but, um, um, ding, ding, uh, my brother here tells me, uh, that there were suppo- maybe some, um, uh, customers that had come to maybe look at getting some, uh, enchantments done on their, their weapons, and that is what I excel at best, is, uh, enchanting and, and working on, uh, weaponry, and not to the same way that my, my brother does, but, uh, uh, in a way. Your, uh, your brother made me this fine modular knife, and gave me a two-year knife warranty as well. It's, it's quite generous. Oh, yes, uh, my my enchantments cover a, a one year warranty as well, in case you know any anything bad happens. Um, which it doesn't. It, I promise you, it doesn't. Nothing bad happens. But uh, you also get. Do a, you accept his punch card as well? No, uh, no. Uh, I have a separate point system. We won't talk what? about that now. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an in character reaction? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's yes. hard. It's hard out here for some merchants, and I must keep the tools of my trade very. Uh, close to my heart. What has a punch card got to do with keeping the tools of your trade close to your heart? I'm not a hack! (laughs) (laughs) Don't! Assume. Otherwise. I still... I'm good. I'm not laughing anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Alright. Well, what, uh... What, uh... What magic can you do to this knife? Easy peasy, you look a little, um, light in the money pouch, and, uh, <coughs> um, I can, uh, I can bind your weapon to you, which is very, very useful, very simple enchantment. It takes me, uh, but a moment to apply it. Uh, I have the resources for a couple of them now, uh, but it costs 20 gold pieces, and it will be bound to you, uh, therefore you can immediately bring it right back to you. You can't lose it, uh, unless the, the binding is broken. So if I throw it, you can. It, it can come back to me. Bring it back to you. Yes. Mm, this does. Seem and I cool. can customize it any way you like. I can do. Uh, the simple one my, is a, my drag and drop combo. <laughs> I can <laughs> make it teleport back to you. A um, little bit extra gold, and I can make it grow legs and come back to you, which is uh, something that some uh, children like for the toys. Rich children, of course, not poor ones. <laughs> You give children knives with legs to play with? Uh, but they're not sharp. Uh, the rich and poor thing goes right over Kinnick's head. <laughs> <laughs> I do notice. <laughs> what, that it went over my head? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I take note of it. I add it to my journal. <laughs> well, uh, so the cheapest option, it just flies through the air back to me? Yep. Was it? Will it always fly handle side towards me? Hmm. Yes. <laughs> Can I roll? Can I, can I, roll, roll perception. Roll, yeah, I want to roll perception to see if I pick up on the fact that he clearly doesn't, isn't sure. I rolled a 14. You don't pick up on it. Ah, oh, well, that seems useful. Also, if you want to, it would be uh, more insight. Than, well, no, I mean, perception. Nah, I've already rolled fine. perception, doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, well, that sounds good, then. Yeah, I think I'll go with that, where it flies back towards me. Handle side always. Okay, uh, only a 10% chance to accidentally curse it. Here, can I take your knife? Uh, sorry, you said something very quickly. Hmm? <laughs> Did you say you had a punch card? I, I can't no, remember. No, no, I have a point system. <laughs> and how, can I sign up for this point system? What is mm, the... Uh, it's back at my shop. We'd have to travel about 20 miles to sign up. I don't have all the necessary information. This is just a, a favor from my brother. Hmm. It does good work. Uh, he seems a little odd, I know, but... It, a lot of what comes out of his mouth is, um... Bullshit. But he does good work. <laughs> Why would you... S bullshit? He's been lying to me? No, it's... it's it's a game he plays. Don't, don't. It's a game that he plays. It's he, taking so fucking long to get an enchantment on his knife. He likes to <laughs> he likes to just play around with customers. Just son, will you just get it over with? Yeah, fine. Just hand me the knife. I'll get it done. Twenty gold pieces. It'll be bound to you. It won't stab you, and it's not cursed or anything. Unless okay. I wanted what it to be. Which I could if I wanted to, but I won't. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. I would like I would like this knife to be bound to me. Okay, 20 gold pieces, and he he pulls out uh, a, a small, thin uh, metal rod, and he uh, kind of lays it alongside the knife. He pulls out a, uh, a silvery powder, and there's uh, there's like a groove made in the knife, and he takes the powder and applies it into the groove, and then uh, kind of takes the, the silvery rod and runs it along the silvery powder, and it is now solid again. Well, here you go. Easy as pie. All right, I throw it at the door. Okay, you throw it at the door, and after about, I want to say, five, five to ten seconds, it comes back. It, it flies back to you, handle first. And I, I, I want to roll to see if I catch it. No, you, you just, it just... Oh, uh, it always... Okay, sweet. Just easy catch. Perfect. Oh, wow, this works really well. Uh, thank you. Hmm? Bird, did you want something? Huh? Yeah, same thing on a throwing knife. Absolutely. Let me take that. Does the same process and attaches the spell to it. Is it also 20 gold for him? It is also 20 gold. All right. Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Yeah, I'm done. Got all shopping around. All right. I want to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> Once again, the man who gives us our main quest and all the information talks for one half as long as the random retail employee. <laughs> <laughs> hey! I had some good dialogue there for the for. <laughs> I'm not denying it's that. because all of the I'm merchants saying, are psychopaths. I'm sorry. Yes, you can do that with major characters too, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's braided from Brendan's real life experience. Okay, it's where it's what he knows I best. Know. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to ask: Did we get any experience? Or, oh no, there's no. We don't do experiences. We killed a child. I mean, I got experience. Yeah, Avery killed, Life experience. I mean, bird, 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 no, bird, yeah. bird levels up from killling a child. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that the message we want to be sending? Yeah, it's like a, <laughs> it's like a baby snake. You get more experience out of them when they're young. Oh Jesus! I was more asking, because um, last last time we did f we did finish a quest, and I was wondering how leveling worked or experience and stuff. But I guess we can not yet. level again. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just not sure how it works, so that's why I was asking like in this Uh I, I I do levels essentially after a certain amount of like combat or a certain amount okay. of like quests done. Um Okay. But it, we've kind of had a lot of tomfoolery. Uh so after after this next one, after after this adventure there will probably be a, there will almost okay. certainly be a level up, so. Okay, I was just curious how you did levels that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're ready to go, I'm guessing. Are we meeting up at the crime scene, or what's happening here? I, I guess we go there. So heading into, uh, Johan's house is unlocked for you. Dwellweather made that abundantly uh, clear. He he gave you all directions to it, uh, off camera, obviously. Uh, outside, off panel, right? Uh, so entering Johan's home, um, you can see that he clearly loved his wine. Uh, they're empty, half empty, and half full, uh, depending on if you're an optimist or a pessimist. Wine bottles scattered all throughout the house. Uh, it's a two-story home uh, with the main entryway leading directly into the dining room. Off uh, the dining room is a kitchen, uh, what appears to be a storage room and a bathroom on the first floor, and a bedroom and study on the second floor. All right, I want to start with the uh, like the kitchen area. Mm -hmm. Start looking around. If okay. We splitting up, gang? Uh, I guess we can split up. There's a, You said there's a second floor, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to the second floor. Did you say he had a study? Yep, he also has a study. Uh, yeah, mm. I want to go to his study. I'm going to go to the second floor in his... Uh, I suppose that his bedroom is probably second floor, so... Okay, Mandy, check your DMs for me. Mm-hmm. 
Ah, now things are starting to make sense. Huh? What do you mean? Uh, it's nothing. Huh? My God speaks to me. Oh, no. Okay, where is everybody going? Like I said, there is um, there is a dining room, kitchen, storage room, bathroom on the first floor. There is a bedroom and a study on the second floor. I was going to the bedroom. Okay. I'm going to the study. Okay. And... I'm in the kitchen. Bird's in the kitchen. Okay. Brick house. I'll also go in the kitchen. Okay. Um, we'll start with the two that are in the kitchen. Um, a cursory glance shows you that there is a um, a cast iron pan, like he said, still sitting with kind of a, a moldy charred pancake sitting in it. Uh, sitting on one of the little counters next to the oven is a, a half empty wine glass and a bottle of wine. Huh. I want to walk over to the table and look at the label of the wine for what he was drinking. Um, it is a like a like a house wine. So it is it is it is gabble grapes house wine. <laughs> gabble grapes. <laughs> gabble grapes. It says uh, it has the year, the current year on it. However, okay. So it is a a a fresh from the boat wine, fresh off the is boat it wine. wine? Off the boat. I mean, yeah, because the, the Gabble Goose Winery yeah, is on one yeah, of the yeah, giant yeah. boats. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm hmm So, wait. So, it's not dwarven wine. No, it is gnomish wine. Okay. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. All right. So, this is not strong enough for him to have wandered off on his own off of half a glass. I look at Brickhouse. You got anything? Mm. Oh, no. What, what do I know about gnomish wine? 18. <laughs> You know that it can have a have a have a kick, um, but usually not enough to take out anybody uh, really, except for gnomes. It's a low <laughs> alcohol wine. It's a sipping wine. Uh, he wasn't vertically challenged. This wouldn't do it. <laughs> All right. I look around the kitchen again. Do I notice anything notably out of place or disheveled beyond the bottles? Besides the fact that it looks like he was taken or or disappeared or 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 whatever happened um, while he was still cooking, no, you notice nothing amiss except that he should really uh, call a cleaning service and get some of these bottles taken care of. Okay, are there any windows in the kitchen? There are a few windows at the front. I would like to investigate the windows. Okay, roll investigation. 15. Notice nothing is amiss with the windows. Do I detect any mm. evil or strange energies in this room? You you do not detect anything that would uh, drive your senses wild, drive you crazy. Mm. What are the adjacent rooms to the kitchen? There is a storage room and a bathroom. Storage room. I want to check... I don't trust bathrooms right now. I'm going to check the storage room. Okay. Uh, while you're going to the bathroom, let's move on to Kenick, who's going to the study, correct? Uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm okay. in the study. Um, within the study, there is a desk and two uh, bookshelves on either side, uh, mm -hmm. leading out to a grand window right behind the desk. Um, there is, are several documents and letters strewn about uh, with various mm -hmm. wine bottles all over the place as well. And a small lockbox sitting on the study right, right in front of the chair. I want to do a general arcana check, like just glance around the room with like, you know, looking to see if there are any uh, magic items. Okay. Or, or roll that stands out. for arcana. Oh, I roll the seven. Nope. You notice nothing amiss. You cannot okay. feel any energies or any energies that may have existed okay. uh, could uh, have dissipated by now. Can I look around and see if I see a ledger? Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you want me to roll for that or? Yep. Investigation. Investigation. Sure thing. I roll a 17. Okay, you find a, a, a ledger, um, essentially a series of sales, uh, wine sales and weapon sales, uh, mm -hmm. both just clearly just there, like not trying to hide it at all. Right. And um, his most recent sale was a, uh, a shipment of wine that he had purchased that had arrived just a week prior. Okay. Can I look through the ledger? and uh, see if I can see any of the names of the other missing merchants within it. Yeah, um, they are they are clear as day. Uh, basically, there is some inner trading of wine and alcohol. Um, the wine that he had uh, purchased uh, was also uh, wine that he had wrote down a note. Uh, he wrote right underneath it, uh, let's see, uh, Jackal Recommends. Sorry, Jackal Recommends? Mm-hmm. All right, can I roll 
history or something to see if I f- know what that might be. Check the to handout I gave you. Check the, that's one of the missing merchants. Oh, Jack. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Grain stage. Okay. Um, I want to do another, I want to go over to the lockbox. You said there was a lockbox. There is a lockbox. Yeah. Uh, I want to go over to the lockbox. Is, is it, I mean, is it locked? <laughs> yeah, it's just a locked lockbox. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, can I roll perception to see if I can see the key around in the uh, room? Be investigation, yeah. Investigation, sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I rolled a four. No, you do not find a key anywhere. Mm. Damn, where did this key be? <laughs> mm. uh, I mean, uh, there's a few people that can lock big. Yeah, on a call for bird. Okay, uh, David, you're in the bedroom. Yes. Yeah, so I, I am in the in his bedroom. Yep. There are uh, wine bottles strewn all about. Um, very basic bedroom. A nice royal bed with a canopy, uh, and uh, two dressers next to it. Uh, the bed is the room is a disgusting mess filled with wine bottles, but the bed is made. <laughs> oh wow! Um, I guess these are all empty bottles. Empty and half full. Yeah. Okay. What does he never finish fucking wine? <laughs> because he passed out. He doesn't uh, drink day old wine. Wow. I, I use perception to see if I if anything catches my Would it be investigation? Or, or invest investigation or perception? investigation, yeah. Oh investigation, sorry. To investigate the room. Yeah. <laughs> oh you're right. I'm t- I'm dumb. Five. You see nothing out of the ordinary except for uh, myriad bottles of wine. Uh, can I look at the dress inside the dressers? Yeah, it's it, full of clothes. Well, shit. And one dresser has it, it is full of empty wine bottles. Jesus. Yeah, he has a problem. Um, does he have a nightstand? Yeah, right next to the bed. Can I search the nightstand? It just has a Bible in it. <laughs> Fuck up. <laughs> Open the Bible, Bible, see if there's any money. <laughs> What what kind of Bible would, would he have? The Holy Bible of Christianity. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Can I look under the bed? Yeah, the, the bed does know. not have an underneath. Well shit. Well I guess I, I guess I go back to where the other people are. I don't think there's anything in here. Okay. Bird, you were checking the storage room? Yeah. Okay. But I think Kenneth called for me. Okay. Were you gonna go check with him first then? Uh I'll glance the storage room really quick. You see when you enter the storage room that there is a very obvious trap door. Ah, fuck Kinnick. <laughs> I want to try and open the trap door. All right. Uh, it opens with ease and uh, leads down into what seems to be a wine cellar. Oh, I go down into the wine cellar. I okay. look around. All right. Yeah. In the wine cellar, there are casks of wine strewn all about. The torches have gone out, but I believe you have low light vision, correct? Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. yeah, you can you can clearly see and make out the casks of wine and uh, some odds and ends, some small trink- trinkets strewn here and there. Um, but it seems like a, just a normal uh, rich person wine cellar from a uh, first glance. OK, I want to move further into it and start investigating the uh, casks and looking around for any possible secret passageways or anything. OK, I'll roll investigation five. Uh, you uh, find nothing out of the ordinary. It seems like a normal wine cellar. You put your talons up against the wall and try to press for like a secret secret entrance or something. You try to pull down on the torches to see if a, a lever is activated, um, but nothing happens. I feel like an idiot. By this, by that, by the time that he's in the wine cellar, uh, is Sad Machine there? But like in the kitchen area. Where are you going? Something? Like after you're done with the well, bedroom, I guess. When I'm when I was done, I was just gonna go. I was just gonna uh, there, go find there are Bird and other rooms. <laughs> yeah, you could go and investigate. Oh other wait, rooms. what other rooms were there? Again, sorry. There was, there was the, the uh, wait, living room. Oh, bathroom. I mm-hmm. guess. Okay, so I went to the bathroom. Then never mind. Sorry. Okay. Uh, in the bathroom, there is a, a porcelain toilet. Done, wait, and a porcelain. With the- I was about to head upstairs to go convene with Kinnick, but I wanted to take a glance of the bathroom of the bedroom before I went all the way up as well, because I just want to look at every room. Okay. okay. Um, heading to the bathroom, David. Uh, uh. We'll we'll meet up with Bird and Kinnick after. Um, Brick, do you do you have anything of note that you'd like to check without my? divine senses i feel a little bit naked i'm sort of vibrating in the corner (laughs) 
Oh god, the shock is getting to him again. I can't feel anything. Oh, breaks my heart. Uh, so I'm in the turn. Okay, the- um, what do you want to do while you're in the bathroom? There is a porcelain toilet and a porcelain bath tub. Is there any, uh, storage thing? No. Like, uh, no? There's a toilet, uh, a bathtub, and a, a, like a, like a sink. Hmm. Like a nice, a nice, a really nice sink. <laughs> I, I open the toilet lid and I look inside. That, I don't fucking Clear know. water. You see clear water with your eyes. Okay. Sorry, I don't think there's anything in the bathroom, is there? I guess I use investigation. Okay. I rolled a 20, natural 20. <laughs> you find uh, right next to the toilet a, what seems to be, or appears to be, a, a small tuft of fur. Huh. Uh, can I use nature? Yep. To figure it figure out if it's from an enim nail that I know. I got rolled in 13. You can see that it's from uh, some sort of rat, but you don't know what kind of rat. And also it seems like a large amount of fur for just a rat. Hmm. Um, is there a hole in the wall or something? Nope. No? Yeah, with your investing, you can see no obvious holes in the wall. Just or any cracks that a rat, fur. just this tough to fur. The I, I go see Kenny because I suspect that he's the one that could know the most about nature. Okay, um, Bird, you've met up with Kenny, and he shows you the lockbox that he's found. Okay, uh, I'm gonna roll for thieves tools then. Okay, roll for those tools. Hell yeah! You 17. open it up, and inside of the lockbox is 45 gold pieces, as well as a small golden ring with the Charybdis insignia. Uh-huh. Didn't he say that he wasn't a part of Charybdis? I don't know. You, you're the one who knew the guy. No, I'm saying that didn't the guy who gave us this quest say that Johan wasn't a part of Charybdis? God's booming voice. Oh. He did. No. <laughs> yeah. Why would he have the Charybdis ring if he was not a part of Charybdis? I think these merchants have more in common than they might be letting on. I mean, it could mean nothing. They're merchants after all, but they all appeared in his ledger. And along with a all note, of them? all of them, and along with a note saying Jackal's rec- Jackal recommends, which is the name of one of the missing merchants. I don't know. It could be nothing, but I, I don't know. It just struck out to me. Stuck out to me. What did Jackal recommend? Uh, was it was a was a wine? Oh, okay. Well, then that's that's Johan. I want to check the bedroom. Okay. Um, inside the bedroom. Uh. There is, like I said to David, um, a well-made bed. Um, it's a little bit more chaotic now that David has already kind of gone through it. Um, yeah, just but threw you s- everything on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought there was no signs of struggle. <laughs> <laughs> I just took all the clothes, ripped them, put them Hi. on the ground. Hi, welcome to wall. Make Your Own Red Herrings. Today, <laughs> let's have our players build their red herrings for us. <laughs> I just punched, I punched a wall. Spit some blood on the ground. How'd you get the... <laughs> uh, Fun. I immediately turned to Sad Machine and said, did you make his bed? No. Why would okay, I- well, why is his bed made then? I mean, maybe well, if he was an alcoholic, he never made it to his bed. So it's just well, maybe he woke up and... Well, okay, but Kinnick, why would his bed ever be made? That's fair. I, I didn't know the guy. I didn't know the you guy know him that well than... either, but man made it to his bed with some frequency. Well, maybe he woke up and had a clear head. You don't know, Johan. I don't. That's what I said. <laughs> I know. I'm reiter- I'm saying that he would not wake up with a clear head. <laughs> I want to roll a Connor on the bed. <laughs> Look under the, under the fucking bed sheets. I rolled an 11. Okay. Um, there's nothing magical about the bed. I would like to investigate the bed and like look under the sheets and underneath it. Okay. Um, fuck me. <laughs> Rolled eight. Uh, you find nothing amiss on the bed except for the fact that well, yeah, it's weird that like it's made. I get. I guess we can all investigate it then, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll an investigation of a uh, little sixteen. <laughs> okay. Sad machine. You find uh, another tuft of fur. Hey. Tucked underneath one of the sheets. 
hey, this is exactly like the other one I found in the toilet. Did you say Bathroom. toilet like that? Toilet. The toilet. <laughs> and the toilet. This is exactly like the other tuff of fur that I found in the bathroom. What is it? A tuft of fur. <laughs> but like, of what <laughs> is it? Like, I don't know. I don't know enough. You about do know. I was ho- no. What do you mean? I do know. I, I I investigated and I don't know what. I don't know what. You're just not going to relay the information you got from the investigation. <laughs> Okay. I did say that you knew that it was from a rat, but you couldn't tell yeah, what kind oh, of right. rat. Sorry, sorry. God, David, have you listened a single time tonight? <laughs> have you listened to a single thing anyone else has said tonight? I'm, I'm tired. Give me a moment. Oh, you're not still <laughs> laughing? Okay. No, I'm not laughing. I'm just tired now. Holy fuck, we've been running nearly two hours. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna fuck. die. Yeah. We're close, we're close, I promise. Oh uh, I'm guessing it's from some sort of rat, but it's a bit... It's a lot of fur for a rat. I'm gonna roll that counter on the tuft of fur. Okay. Uh, I rolled a ten. You. Uh, Brendan roll- has a decision to make. Brendan has a decision to make. <laughs> <laughs> you detect trace amounts of some kind of magic on the fur. Uh, Wait, I can roll Arcana on it. You also I'm can. I'm a fucking trickster boy. You are. You're an arcane trickster. Nine. God damn it. Ain't got shit. Aren't there, wait, aren't that's there fur, like, baby. Aren't there like rat people in D and D? Right, rat folk. Rat folk. Could I? They're like not the size of rats, though. They're bigger. Yeah, exactly. But this is bigger than a. This is like rat fur, but bigger than uh. It's no? not it's bigger per lot. se. There's a lot of fur. It's just a There's lot. The, mm-hmm. A lot of magic fur. Could it be a swarm? I mean, Could you're the one. You're, you're the one who has a swarm. I feel like a swarm would show some amount of struggle. Oh, I guess it would. They might have got him when he was passed out drunk, though. What That's... kind of a rat? No, because he was Takes making a man pancakes. Doesn't leave a struggle. He was making pancakes. Should we investigate the pancakes? <laughs> are rat folk are rat folk inherently magical? Mandy, check your DMs. My, um, um, <laughs> my god is irritated and says stop that and check below check below what the is bed it, oh the fucking the, the fucking wine cellar let's go back to the wine cellar <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought, thought it was fucked f- just because I fucked my investigation you, you found a wine Man. cellar yeah I found a wine cellar yeah it was earlier oh. okay. well, oh, I guess we'll go down from. wait hang, hang on. on I should uh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I found a wine cellar. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you roll for insight? Oh, no. See if I would, it would. I would put two and two together that some kind of. Rat oh, that might, might have been where the what rats came from. You're a bitch. You can't do that. <laughs> you didn't come up with that other game. You can't fucking do that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you cannot fucking do that, Cameron. <laughs> Um, so I guess we all go into the wine cellar then. Yeah, let's all go to the wine cellar. Okay, okay. someone roll investigation in the wine cellar. <laughs> uh, I mean, we can 18, all... 18, fuck all right, of you. All right, Bird, uh, what you had not seen before w- during your preliminary investigation, you do see now. Behind one of the casks of wine, there is a small hole in the wall. And right next to the small hole is a pile of expensive clothing. And... You don't know what may be down there, but you do know that it may be a little bit perilous. Hey, this episode of the podcast wouldn't be possible without the help from my patrons such as Agraba Winslow, Alan Diver, Alex Steer, Buckshot Papaya, Q underscore, Dax Ritchie, Dodger, Dreams of Ice, Ducky Madness, The Scala, Eric Scott Gillies, Jeff Smith, Manuel Martinez, Marco Sotelo, Ryson, looking fresh though, Ryan Rankin, Seawolf812, Sky, Spooky Ghost, Teague, The No Ninja, Travis Vapes, Tyler Collins, Unarmed Toaster, Vanderick, and Willie Oliver. Thanks so much for the support and we'll see you next time.